So I'm planning to visit Japan this summer, and as a kind of you know preparation in a sense, uh, I'm a very big history fan. I actually started reading a very interesting book that's written by John Tolan. It's called The Rising Sun. Um, it's about the decline and fall of the Japanese Empire, and it actually won the Pulitzer Prize in the 1970s. It's a great read. Um, it's very detail oriented. You know, uh, pretty much it tells you all about the the lead up Japanese politics in like the 1930s all the way through the entire Pacific theater. Anyways, uh, the reason I'm making this video is because one chapter in particular stuck to my mind. And it's a chapter that's interesting because it really highlights something important in today's day and age, and that is the importance of proper and detailed communication. You know, being clear about terms, especially when you speak different languages. So basically, the entire chapter is kind of about the lead up to Pearl Harbor. And the background matter is that the Japanese uh, have had sanctions placed on them, like especially in oil, and they are feeling the effects. And so they want to negotiate like a diplomatic settlement with the Americans to kind of like alleviate, take away these sanctions from the Americans. And so what they do is they engage with talks, right? And so the Japanese kind of understand that they have like the short end of the stick and they know they have to propose something to the Americans. And so what they do is Foreign Minister Tojo, the Japanese foreign minister, he in fact sends two proposals via telegraph to Ambassador Nomura, who is living in Washington, D.C. Now, one of the people in charge in the U.S. government is uh, the Foreign Minister Cordell Hall. Right, so Cordell Hall is in the situation, he's like negotiating with the Japanese. Uh, he, of course, doesn't want America to make a lot of concessions but he does want the Japanese to make considerable concessions. And so what happens is the Japanese send this telegraph, but this telegraph is actually intercepted by the American diplomats. And they translate this telegraph before the meeting with the ambassador the next day. But the problem here is that this translation is completely wrong. Like it's, it's very mistranslated. Uh, like a lot of the nuances of what the Japanese were trying to say is completely lost and so Holt reads this and he is misled by like the tone of the telegraph, right? Like it leads him to believe that the Japanese are like unwilling to make any concessions whatsoever, that they don't want to even bind themselves to any formal agreement. And so what he does is he and the Americans send them back their own proposal. And in this American proposal, the Americans demand that the Japanese withdraw all their troops from Indochina and quote unquote China. Now, why is this important? China is this very important term the entire discussion hinges upon. Because Ho was being imprecise in what he was saying. When he said China, Ho in fact actually meant like all of China except for Manchuria, right? Manchuria is this part of Northeastern China that the Japanese invaded in like 1937, I think it was. So they've occupied Manchuria for the past couple of years. But for the Japanese, when they read this proposal from the Americans and when they see China, they interpret this as meaning all of China, which includes Manchuria. So there's like a miscommunication. This is not actually what the Americans are proposing. And so uh, naturally the Japanese government finds these terms completely unacceptable. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, right? Then like this chapter goes on to argue that, you know, the, the war could have possibly been prevented. At least, you know, the, the diplomatic talks been extended for a couple of months had both parties kind of known exactly what the other was were saying. And so, yeah, that's like pure speculation, of course, but uh, it's a very interesting chapter, like the what ifs. Anyways, to uh, conclude, for me, this just shows like the, the vital importance of proper communication, detailed communication, you know, like having a mutual understanding of uh, the terms that are being discussed. And it, it doesn't just apply to diplomatic situations where, you know, uh, and if things go really, really bad, uh, you might find yourself in a war uh, very quickly, which is uh, not an ideal situation, I would say. But it's also applicable to things like, you know, friendships, talking to people at work, talking to people with different ages, you know, having like a, a mutual understanding of what you're trying to say. So um, I think it's like relevant as ever. And yeah, that being said, uh, this kind of concludes my video. I hope you uh, found it interesting. It was quite short, but uh, rest assured, I have uh, more physics videos, more concepts I thought up with that I am planning to upload quite soon. So bear with me and uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon in the next video. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My friends, yesterday, on June 4th, 1944, Rome fell to American and Allied troops. The first of the Axis battles now in our hands. One up.